namaste. Nothing is what it seems to be. That's a statement with a double meaning, double entendre. So what are the two meanings? Well, one is the obvious colloquial meaning, and the other is the esoteric meaning. So the obvious meaning is that everything is something other than what it seems to be. And why is that? Because we don't take into account the fact that we are looking only at consciousness. You know, I supposedly see this camera in front of me, right? But actually, I'm not seeing the camera. I'm seeing the consciousness of the camera reflected in my daily waking consciousness, Jagrat. And when I dream at night, I'm seeing so many different things, people, situations, actions, but none of those are real. They're only thoughts reflected in my Swapna consciousness. And then when I go into deep sleep or into Samadhi, I see nothing at all. And this is the esoteric meaning that only nothing is what it seems to be. <laughs> Why? Because there's no things in it. Every time we recognize a thing, what we're really seeing is an illusion. We're really seeing a mirage. Just like if you go in the middle of the Sahara Desert or any of the great deserts of the world, you may see off in the distance what looks like a lake. Well, maybe it looks like a lake, but actually it's just the sun's rays being refracted through a boundary layer, a temperature inversion in the atmosphere. So it's real, yeah, it's a real mirage. <laughs> but. We go through the world thinking, oh, this thing and that thing and the other thing and this, my body is me and everything related to it is mine. Huh? This is certainly an illusion because all things, everything that seems to have a boundary and an individual separate identity, it, it can't be. And why is that? Because Brahman is everything. Brahman is everything. Brahman is the primal, unconditioned, non-dual awareness. This is what we realize in self-realization. So then, what are all these other things? Well, they're things. <laughs> They're separate entities that appear to be, but actually they are not. They are maya, that which is not. So then, how come we experience this world with all these separate things and so many different people and other beings and stuff happening and time and space and separation and individuality and all. It's all maya. It all doesn't exist. It is not what it seems to be. See, how we see or how we interpret our experience depends on our ontology. It depends on our model of the universe our background knowledge by which we classify things <laughs> and experiences, perceptions. So if our background ontology is, I am a man or woman, I live in this world, I am my body, 
and all these things around me are mine, and so on and so on. Then we're experiencing a completely illusory life. And if we're lucky, at the very end, when we merge into nothingness, we'll contact the reality, if we're lucky. But most people fight and strain against the nothingness. They do everything to avoid it. And so the only time they experience reality is when they're asleep. <laughs> Life is so strange. <laughs> when there's no thing, when they're in sushupti. So to experience the reality, one has to have a different ontology, a different background model that we use to interpret our experience. And what is that? I am Brahman, unconditioned, boundaryless, non-dual awareness. And anything that appears to be different from myself is Maya. It's simply the three conditioned states of consciousness, Jagrat, Svapna, and Sushupti. And all the things that seem to be in those states are actually just dreams, illusions, projections of my own mind, because I have this language, which has all these different verbal categories, and because name creates form, and name and form together create consciousness. Therefore, I appear to have consciousness of these things. But consciousness can't be real either. Why? Because it's duality. There is the knower, the known, and the knowing. So there's actually three things, the Trinity, and we've been over and over and over this in early episodes of this channel. You can't have duality without having trinity. That's because between every subject and object, there is perception or consciousness. And that consciousness is dualistic because it has a subject and object. But those aren't real. <laughs> there is no such thing as a subject and an object and consciousness. They're all illusions, mirages. They are something else. What are they? They are illusions in these conditioned states of consciousness. And what is it conditioned by? Our language, name and form. Name and form creates consciousness. Consciousness creates name and form. That's what the Buddha taught in his teaching of Paticca Samuppada, dependent arising. So what we have is a big mess. We're in illusion and nothing that we experience is really what it seems to be. And at the same time, only nothing is what it appears to be. <laughs> but it's not paradoxical if you're aware of the reality. Okay, so let's go through it again. I am Brahma. And if I experience anything that seems to be different from me, it is through the mirror of consciousness reflecting all these illusions. For example, if I go to a movie theater, and there's a screen, and on the screen is projected a movie. Now, I can go into the movie with the idea that this is real. Huh? And in, in, among cinematographers, this is known as the suspension of disbelief. That, oh, this isn't real, this is just a movie. And when that goes away, because the movie is so compelling, so interesting, that we forget that it's just a movie and we get personally drawn into it and involved in it. 
This is suspension of disbelief. So we all have suspension of disbelief about the world. And this is called illusion. Huh? Maya, that which is not. <laughs> so we can go round and round this thing and we can look at it from all different angles. So the important thing here is then what is spirituality? What is the spiritual path? What is religion? What is God and goddess? What are all these things? Well, these things collectively are called the path. And the idea of the path is that it's a special kind of illusion, <laughs> a special kind of maya that is designed to take us out of the illusion. See, there's the maya that is designed to draw us in to the illusion and make us more and more trapped. And then there's this one special kind of maya that's designed to draw us out. Now, of course, this is a very tricky thing, right? It's a very tricky thing not to objectify the metaphors used in the path and think that they are real in the same way that the world is real. Well, they are. <laughs> but at the same time, we have to see that these metaphors are designed to decrease our suspension of disbelief. In other words, to make us disbelieve in the existence of the world, in the existence of separate objects from the self, and to bring us out to realize the actual situation. This is called self-realization. Now, of course, from the viewpoint of someone who is realized, Everybody's already self-realized because everybody is already already Brahman and they're already looking at the three conditioned states of consciousness as their objects. Huh? But there's no duality because those states of consciousness are also consciousness. They're also Brahman. But they're Saguna Brahman. Brahman with all qualities, whereas pure Brahman is Nirguna Brahman without qualities. So we are the Nirguna Brahman. That's why there's a famous poem by Shankaracharya where every verse ends, Shivoham, Shivoham, I am Shiva. What does that mean? I am Brahman. And what's the proof that we are Brahman? We're conscious. Only Brahman is conscious. We're alive. Only Brahman is alive. See, all the things that we see in, in the material world, most of them aren't alive. Like I look around and I see the house the lights, the camera, the microphone, the mountain over there. Huh? It's not alive. So how can it exist? Well, it was created by someone who's alive. Shakti. That's her job. Her job is to entertain Shiva. So Shiva loves Shakti. Huh? She keeps him from being bored. <laughs> not, that, not that existing as pure consciousness, eternity and bliss <laughs> could ever get boring. But she is the one who creates the dreams, the illusions, the maya. And she is the one who can award liberation from maya to those who follow her path. That's why we promote the Shakti Pat, huh? the path of Shakti, Sri Vidya, Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti, Aum.